It has been an interesting uh, story of Planix from the very early days when the company was, you know, seven, eight people uh, to where we are today, a division of Trimble, uh, a company that's, uh, you know, worth three and a half billion dollars. I was the director of Honeywell Canada's Advanced Technology Center. And then in 1991, Honeywell, in its wisdom, uh, decided to restructure in the aerospace and defense business, and we were one of the casualties. So uh, three of us uh, from the ATC, the Advanced Technology Center, Bruno Scherzinger, Eric Lothopoulos, and myself, decided to form a company, which we called Applied Analytics Corporation, and uh, carry on doing our, our research and development this time under contract for applications of um, integrated navigation and motion compensation technology to the military. And so we started the company in 1991, um, focused on research and development, hired four more people from the ATC, um, including uh, Joe Hutton. I've been here since day one, so I was the first employee hired by Bruno Blake and Eric right out of school. Bruno was my co-supervisor uh, for my master's degree, and when they offered me a job, I leapt at the opportunity. They just had a great vision for what they wanted to do, and the technology, I was in love with the technology, so I just, I just wanted to be part of that and going forward to take this technology into the commercial realm. We had an opportunity through attending trade shows and conferences see that there are some really good applications for our military technology to non-military markets. First being uh, airborne surveying, um, marine surveying, and also road surveying and, and railway track geometry measurements. We decided that at that point that we would uh, try to make a go of the uh, product business, uh, not realizing what we were getting into. <laughs> When I first joined, uh, the company was doing uh, contract R&D, so taking the technology that had been developed uh, and applying it to different applications. But the intent was to take the technology into the product space. The core technology was um, based on uh, GPS, the global positioning system, and uh, the GPS combined with IMUs. We could combine these two um, sensors uh, using our software and a mission computer to obtain extremely high accuracy and position orientation. So we decided to call the product um, uh, PAWS, a position orientation system, and move forward at that point with the development of the products. During product development, um, one crucial thing for us was to acquire a good supply of IMUs. The problem we had was um, IMUs that offered the performance we needed to meet the survey application accuracy requirements were very expensive. So the uh, U.S. Navy decided in its wisdom to cancel the um, A-12 fighter program and put all the avionics that had been acquired for that program uh, up for auction. So <laughs> and included in, in those avionics were a large number of IMUs. So <laughs> we placed a bid uh, for these units and were successful. Um, in winning the bid and obtain a large number of IMUs at uh, bargain basement prices. Yeah, so that gave us the, the basis uh, to carry on uh, product development for our, our target markets. So I joined in 1993 when Aplanix decided to build their very first product. We had a first customer, uh, at that time was Roadware, which is now Fugro, and there was about seven or eight young engineers. We weren't as old as we are right today. And we were given the task of building the very first product and we had to deliver in February of the next year. So within seven months, we had to, to develop this product called PAWS, PAWS LB in that case. Some of my early memories are when that very first product rolled off the production line. That really changed the trajectory of Aplanix. We always wanted to get to making products, having that first one very early days off the line was, uh, was, was quite uh, spectacular. It inspired uh, our competition, a company called TSS in England, 
to rather compete with us, to uh, discuss with us becoming uh, a partnership. And our Paws MB eventually became badged their high-end product. So they basically became our partner to sell the product into the commercial marine survey business. So that was a big success. I think it was 1994, I'm not exactly sure about the date. Joe Hutton and I were sitting in a, what we call our cafeteria, which was basically smaller than Joe Hutton's office. We were sitting there, we were just reminiscing and chatting. We had delivered our first product and we had, I think, sold two or three. And he goes, you better get ready for when the team gets huge and we have lots of engineers and full production. I was turning to myself, and remember back then, there was like, I think 14 of us, 12 of us, the team was really, really small, and our sales were really tiny. And I go to myself, is he drunk or is he fully delusional? So I couldn't fathom what he was saying, but he had the vision to know what we will be five years from that point on. So I give kudos, and that's, that still sticks to me when I talk to my staff, when I'm telling them what could be five years from now and they still give me the same look that I was giving Joe at the time. We started off with uh, seven employees, and by 2000 and one or thereabouts, we had approximately 100, uh, with an office in the United States and an office in Europe as well. One of the problems we ran into is uh, one of the weaknesses of inertial navigation, and that's figuring out which way is north. The technology that was needed to make that work was a relatively new methodology that was being developed in, uh, for precise surveying called uh, kinematic ambiguity re resolution. And so it was my task to figure out how that worked with the help of uh, the University of Calgary uh, that we had contracted to give us assistance. And I came up with the first, what I'd like to call GPS azimuth measurement subsystem or GAMS is the acronym. And that will prove to be quite a game changer. Another technology milestone was a consequence of a prompt from my partner, Eric Lithopoulos, that it would be nice to have a user-friendly processing tool uh, that would run aided inertial navigation on a desktop computer. There was this brand new operating system from Microsoft called Windows NT and a brand new software development kit that, for Windows NT that I used, and I created this first version of our aided INS processing software with a graphical user interface. As it turned out, that caught on with one of our customers, a company in Nashua, New Hampshire, called Emerge Systems, who said, oh, we, we don't have to develop our own anymore. Planix already has this, and it's user-friendly, and you can plug in the numbers, push the button, and get the result. And that then led on to the next stage in the development of our airborne products with the help of our sales manager, Dieter Zoiner, who had a lot of experience from his previous days at Leica in aerial photogrammetry to recognize that putting a high-accuracy pause plus this post-processing software with a user-friendly interface, together we would have a viable airborne product that could be used to substantially reduce the cost of conducting an aerial photogrammetry survey mission. That whole package had a, a dramatic value proposition that caused it to become the standard. So now, any time a camera that shoots pictures of the Earth for the purpose of mapping is taken into any kind of vehicle, airplane, you know, land vehicle. They all have a version of our product. So that, that was a big deal. There was some, uh, you know, real, real um, critical make or break uh, points in the company. A misstep at that point meant the company could go under. There was a situation developed which I thought could lead to the end of the business. As I mentioned, uh, we use uh, these missile guidance units as uh, a core uh, piece of technology in our products. And these missile guidance units, because they're military, are subject to very stringent export controls by all governments. So we found ourselves in 1999, I guess it was, uh, we were caught between 
the U.S. government and Canadian government in a bun fight over the processing and approvals of export licenses for IMUs manufactured in the United States for sale outside of that country. So we were prevented for a period of around five or six months from selling any products outside of the U.S. that contain U.S. manufactured IMUs. Finally, though, I mean, we thought that this was going to possibly completely destroy our business. But fortunately, the U.S. and Canadian governments came to an understanding and we were able to go back to business as usual. But we had lost a lot of sleep and, <laughs> and bitten a lot of nails. <laughs> One of the things I think that is uh, really cool is something that happened fairly recently. So we've been in this business now a little more than 30 years in the direct georeferencing business. And very recently, our chief technology officer, Bruno Scherzinger, and the team that Bruno was leading was recognized for bringing heated inertial technology into the mobile mapping market. And it fundamentally changed the way that mobile mapping uh, was and is being done. I um, have always been a technology guy. When we started Aplanix, uh, it was fairly clear that that was going to be my role. And I basically carried on from the beginning of the company right until I retired, doing exactly that. And so it's been a, a dream job, really, for a person like myself that I could do what I love, that I could wake up in the morning and look forward to my day and contribute in a meaningful way to the company and the company's success. What does Planix mean to me? Um, a solid foundation upon which I based my career. So it means um, a place where I can always come to and find satisfaction through my job and through every part of my career. To me, the first, have always stayed in my mind, the first pause product that we did, the first product that we, we introduced to the Airborne and how much effort and training had to go through, whether it was Dieter with, with Joe Hutton, the first rail system where Steve Wolven and Jan Giroux had to go out there, the first marine system, how much work Eric and the rest of the group had to do with the Canadian hydrographic system. Those first are something that will always stay because you know a lot of effort, intensity had to go to actually open those mar market to educate the staff. Now we have the benefit that everybody knows this is a given that you need the position and navigation system with good robustness and, and accuracy and precision. That's given. It wasn't given even 15 years ago. So we had to work for that. What I found the most satisfying and fulfilling being involved in the formation and early days of Planix was the appreciation that um, I had played a part bringing uh, this advanced technology to the airborne, marine, and, and land survey markets, essentially revolutionizing the way uh, surveys were performed. In terms of the future, I'm really excited for, for Planix. Um, being part of Trimble has opened the doors in so many different ways. Um, in terms of us getting access to new technology within Trimble, but also taking our technology into the rest of Trimble. I work a lot on that and I find that very exciting because even within Trimble, they're still learning about what we do and what we can bring to their products. Um, so I think, um, you know, we're still uh, in our infancy in terms of our relationship with Trimble, even though it's been quite a while. So I, I can see nothing but uh, green uh, fields going forward for Replanix.